relic, 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 relic. Everything in here is a relic. It's just like relic Kapalooza. Yeah. Good, because I started recording. It's like I relic the chance to meet you. Yeah. It's like a as a relish show. Yeah, it's a relish. Okay, it was you. a relish pun. <laughs> Welcome back to. Uh, um, <laughs> two lowly investigators. I think that's what we're. Yeah, called. that's. I we're pretty lowly, so. but are we really investigators? Uh, no. Are we really two different people? Because we're dead. Okay. How can we Fair investigate enough. when we're dead? Uh, with Tyler and Kyle. Nice. I love that thing. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Dalton Van Huser, who is the guy who uh, does a lot of the stuff for the show, the intro, and that like cool, cool graphic. And He's we, a really good friend of ours. We gave him no credit until just now. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, well, uh, we're here today to talk about The Forgotten Age, and this is our Seeker video. So this is a, a different video in the set for The Forgotten Age we're doing a little differently. We're going over each section type. That way the video wasn't three hours long, and you can choose what you want to watch. So if you like Seeker, you can come to this video. If you don't, you can go to one of the other four or five videos that are going to come out at the same time and pick what you want to listen to. And these will be shorter, so expect a shorter uh, rambling from us today. Yeah. But we're starting with Ursula Downs, The Explorer. Uh, Ursula Downs has one of the coolest stories in the... Uh, or, sorry, she's one of the few stories that I've actually read, and let's say that, because I don't know all of them. In the, like, Arkham book that came out a while ago that has, like, all the background for every investigator in the Arkham Files universe. And you get to meet Jake in it, too. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's fun. I highly suggest reading that stuff if you like uh, this universe, you get a little bit of background. But she's got a pretty solid stat line. Um, I'm going to say that about probably everyone besides Calvin. <laughs> because the stat line is, is not solid. It's the opposite of solid. She can run away from stuff. She can investigate pretty well. She's got three willpower, which isn't terrible. She's got one fight, which she's, is... She's just not a fighter. Kind of par for she's the course. She's a finder, not a for, fighter. Uh, the Seekers. Because I think even Typhon is like two, maybe. Yeah. I guess i got to look it up. I'm not going to look it up. Uh, <laughs> after you move to a location, take an investigate action. She's a warfa wayfarer. So, that's cool. Yeah, I like that um, a lot. It's like the it's like uh, it's like Duke, like Duke does that. The he d can the dog. the dog, yeah. Yeah. Ashcan Pete's Duke is like before you rush, great, move to a location. Yeah. I don't know. I was trying to sound like McGruff the crime dog there. <laughs> McGruff. <laughs> so Ursula Downs is not really McGruff, but she has the thing that's like McGruff, and you can only do that once per round. So. Um, and I I like it. It combos well with field field work. Yeah. Really well. You can investigate hardcore. Uh, with that. And then I like the combo here too. So like if you do an investigate normally and you haven't really moved yet and you're trying to get that last clue, if you pull an elder sign, you get plus one, so you're probably going to succeed, hopefully. And then uh, after this test, you can move to a connecting location and then that can trigger her ability to investigate. So if you pull an elder sign, you get to do two actions for the price of a test. Yeah. If you can get a free test there, like any card that would be like, take a trash and do a thing. You can get an elder sign and then move and investigate all at once. So, just That's pretty, pretty sweet. It's cool. I like it. I like her, uh, her text as well, which is discovery is easy, uh, understanding is the hard That's part. That's pretty sweet. And she's a uh, seven seven. Oh, that's true. Yeah. What you can see, uh, if I can move out of the way. No, you're good. They can. They they have. I'm assuming that every person has the cards in front of them and are reading them religiously as we yeah. read them. And I, I like the seven. I like the seven threshold. I feel like that's where you become strong and insane. Yeah. Six is like, <laughs> six is like, just bad. A little bit that's too like, low. Yeah. Yeah. So on the back side, we see that she has a deck size of 30, which is her normal deck size. She can have Seeker card 0 to 5, Relic card 0 to 4, and Neutral card 0 to 5. And then, of course, she gets her own stuff, which is Jake Williams and Call of the Unknown, which we will talk about in a second. But uh, those deck building restrictions are what they are. So what we see here is that when we're looking at Relics, I'm going to close out some of these windows. We have a bunch of stuff up here when we're talking about stuff. So when we have these Relics, um, we get to see that... It's not all just seekers like we uh, pre previously like kind of assumed with the making the jokes earlier at the beginning of the video, but um, the um, mystics. No, well, like it's the, there's rogues too, so there's like mystics, rogues, and seekers. So oh, yeah, there is a few relics in the rogue. Mm -hmm. And I was I was talking to Kyle about that before we started recording, actually. Yeah, so like you got Charn's Obol, you got the decorated skull, which is one we're going to talk about in our uh, Seeker video or our Rogue video. Um, you have the Disc of Imatsa, which is the one that like discards an enemy. Uh, Elder Sign Amulet, 
So, I mean, that one she could have anyway, but that's kind of interesting. That's a relic because it fits with all the other cards yeah. we're about to talk about. Grotesque Statue, which is one of the cool things. You can do, like, really cool combos with Grotesque Statue and Jim Culver, and I'm interested to see how um, she can interact with Grotesque Statue. Jewel of Aurelsius, which is... I had to look this one up because I haven't actually used it, but it's the one where you get to draw cards or get resources when you pull a, a bad symbol, basically. So have that out and protect yourself a little bit, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So... Uh, Spirit Athame. I don't know why she would use Spirit Athame, but it's there if you need it. Gold Pocket Watch and Lucky Dice are the two that are th super cool that I thought. Like, oh, yeah. And those are all exceptional, too. And a lot of these are unique items, though. Yeah, you can only have one, but only the two rogue ones are exceptional. So you can have uh, Gold Pocket Watch and Lucky Dice in here, which I find so funny because she's a explorer. Yeah. And she's like, I found these dice. <laughs> I found this pocket watch in the jungle. I'm just going to start rolling them. <laughs> oh, why are these bad things happening to me? <laughs> and the Chthonian Stone and the Tooth are both cards we'll talk about in other videos. It's the Tooth in this, Tooth of Azalea in this one, and then the Chthonian Stone in the Mystic video. But lots of cool relics. So usually when you have a deck building restriction that's based around a card type, you don't get those subtypes right away. Yeah, but there are already lots of relics out and about. I just like the idea of her. Like there were a ton in this, ton in this set. She she might be a good target for backpack. Yeah. Because she could be like, oh look at this, I found this at this tomb, and then it's like, oh yeah, a sword. Oh cool, a ritual <laughs> dagger. And the nice thing about all of these relics is that I'm pretty sure most of them. Item. Oh, I think they require hand slots. Okay, so I was thinking that most of them don't require anything, but it's like hand slots or jewelry slots or, or what have you. But that's basically the the thing you get is instead of having like weapons you just have like a bunch of like really ancient crap that you carry around with you all the time that's still pretty useful though and then all the secret cards you want yeah so this is interesting cool i'd be interested to see a deck built around uh ursula i don't know that it would be very offensive but it could be definitely be very control oriented right yeah you seekers have a lot of a lot of gadgets mm -hmm. like uh the outsmart door that uses your <laughs> the Kevin Malone trap yeah that uses your brains to do a crap ton of damage Kevin Malone? what's his name the Kevin from Home Alone trap is what I'm thinking because he's like hooks it up to yeah. the door <laughs> they got a lot of ways to get clues for free um, again I think with field research or whatever that yeah. card's called you'd be pretty good here to yeah. do some extra stuff but solid and there's a little story there if you want to read it but don't read it now because we're going to talk about Jake Williams <laughs> The loyal companion. So, like, well, nobody really knows if there's, like, a thing going on between Jake and Ursula, but they're just really good friends, so, I mean, maybe, maybe we'll get more. Maybe we'll figure out more. I mean, it's, it's pressing in this community. You, you should know. You, re you read her I book. I read the book, but it was, that's where I got the idea. It was, like, Literally read her life story. I know, but, like, it's still, it's, like, are they, are they, are they close? Or are, they, are they together or not? I don't know. I gotta make it careful because I don't have to drown my voice out again with a howl like last time. Uh, he's a three cost, ass, a, uh, three cost asset with a book and a question mark icon. Ally and a wayfarer, as we saw with most of the allies we've seen so far in the set. Uh, Ursula downs only, and the move, the first move in, in investi or investigate action you perform each turn does not provoke attacks of opportunity. So that's kind of cool. You can get those clues yeah. without having to worry about um, maybe you need some like light cluing or something like that. Okay. Um. After you reveal a location, put a new location into play uh, and draw one card. So um, that could be cool. After you reveal, I don't know, like putting new locations into play seems interesting, but it seems like you could probably draw a lot of cards from this. Yeah. You just have is. to keep moving around a lot. And I like drawing cards, so it's really good. And uh, like not having to take attack tax of opportunity is pretty sweet. But yeah. she, you know, she's already really good at like running away though mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so her weakness call of the unknown is the other thing where uh, she good, the good thing she can move so much because she's going to need to in the big map because this call of the unknown is going to start dealing horror to her because it says put it on a location and put it in your threat area at the beginning of your turn choose a location other than your location but when you end the turn if you did not successfully investigate the chosen location take two horror so this starts to get into a weird spot of like if you don't have any clues on the board you're just taking horror from this right Which yeah it's kind of a an interesting aspect of this card and i thought this card was like particularly horrible because it like never goes away ever it just like, gets it shuffled. shuffled back into your deck and so you can keep drawing it yeah it's like it's like culver's or rex's yeah they just kind of keep coming back 
Uh, usually, uh, these are the kind of things we see when you're balancing out a character's like good abilities. So, theoretically, if, if this is as bad as we think it is, Ursula is probably going to be a pretty good character because, or a pretty good investigator because she's got such a constant weakness. Dis yeah, disabling weakness. Mm -hmm. or so uh, the first seeker card that we're going to see is Dr. Dr. Ali Horowitz, an assistant curator. Three cost asset with a th um, um, willpower icon. And a ally, and she's an assistant, which doesn't really mean much yet, but the ally does. And there was a reaction after she enters play. You can search the top nine cards of your deck for a relic asset and attach it to her, which is an interesting new thing that's happening in this set is attaching to stuff. So you're seeing uh, cards like Backpack that are like, pull this and put it on here. So that's what we're going to do. And then each relic attached to Dr. Eli Horowitz does not take up any slots, so it's still considered to be in the play under your control. So that's kind of cool. So basically, your ally slot gets to turn into another... Yeah, another like a, mm -hmm. another hand, <laughs> at the very least. Or another, like, uh, importantly, another neck plot spot, because the neck spot is a lot of relics, like the oh, yeah. disc and a lot of the like smaller ones, and she lets you basically have like a, a second neck. Mm. You never knew useful. you wanted it. I, th I think... I think She's pretty cool, uh, and if she's not that useless and, or not that useful unless you're going hard on the relics. Mm -hmm. But like having having speaking extra of relics which, is pretty cool. I was gonna check to see what other. So there's only like yeah, all the relics are just items. So unless if you're doing an item deck, you might like you know lots of items. You may you put her in if she's like if you have lots of relic items. But other than that, I agree with Tyler. Like you probably only are gonna see her in Ursula Downs. Yeah, uh, you know, which kind of sucks because Jake, Jake, um, is an ally. So you have to get charisma, or you have to find another way to get more ally slots, or you can only have like Jake out. And I don't really know how I feel about that as a whole. Like, only having one ally slot means that if you have an ally, like special card in your deck, you kind of have to pick and choose like how you want to. Like you can. You have to be careful about how you play allies because you really want to use your special card, yeah. right? Like Ursula wants Jake out, or does she not? Uh, I would think she does. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll have to figure out if, if they're an item or not. <laughs> get it? It's an item joke because yeah, yeah, items yeah, I... in the game. All right. So the next one is Ancient Stone. This is interesting because Ancient Stone is a one cost one experience card. Yet it's one of those cards that you change your campaign log based around. So you have to find it first, which is another cool, interesting aspect of the cards coming out here. Like uh, reliable. Yeah. Some of these cards are thematically placing experience on them because you have to like find them first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but basically, it's got a book icon, and it's a relic. There you go. There's a relic right away, and you can investigate with this card as an action, as a triggered ability. Uh, your location gets plus three shroud, which is quite a bit, but if you succeed, you discover an additional clue, so that's two clues, and you discard it and record in your campaign log that you have identified the stone, uh, and then you record the difficulty of the total test for the stone after that. So, Yeah, and that last part makes it pretty interesting because if you put on like a four, mm -hmm. it's a seven, and like you can make it pretty difficult. Yeah, and I wonder if that makes the thing that you get to upgrade to better or worse, or yeah. if it has more repercussions. It's gonna be kind of cool to see. Yeah, and even if it's even if it's on like a shroud one, it's a shroud four test, so it's still pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So hopefully yeah. this card is good. Gives, like gives something good. good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and now, again, those ones are like two. There's you get an extra clue for, for one for one resource and a hand slot you get an extra clue at your location once in a game so like it's kind of it's not terrible in its own right yeah um it just is really hard it just makes the test a lot harder <laughs> yeah so i don't know if i'd put it in unless you were planning on trying to get what was up yeah, yeah like you can get it out get it out of the way early or wait until mm -hmm. you see what it gives you all right our next card is the tooth of its sally it's sale Etzil. I want to keep saying it like Russian, but I think it's actually Etzilly. Etzilly. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now I'm going to Italian. So, uh, three cost asset with a willpower icon. It's an it's another relic. Cool. Good on good on them. And it's not unique. No, oh, that's that? interesting. Yeah. So uh, just in case you're new or you're just watching for the first time or you've never played before or you're you have trouble, uniqueness is determined by the. Um, we go back to Ursula real quick. Actually, we don't have to go that far. Dr. L.A. Horowitz has that little star next to her name. That is what determines uniqueness in this game. So, 
Um, a relic item not being unique is interesting to me because usually they are. So yeah, um, you can just have tons. But it is a mortal reminder, like you said. Yeah. So maybe that's the idea: is that you get these all over the time, and it's like a cross, you know, like that you wear. But it's uh, it says you get plus one uh, willpower and plus one evade or agility when you're resolving ability on a treachery card. So this is a really good during the mythos phase card, yeah. and after you succeeded a test for resolving an ability on a card, you get to exhaust it to draw a card. So seems cool. Yeah, uh, I I do like this one because it's not like one of the relic specific cards mm -hmm. that are really heavy in like the seeker set here yeah and it's a uh, really good protection against like the treachery cards across like every single campaign so far yeah the, i guess it's like it's <clears throat> interesting because are you i guess considering placing this in your deck you'd have to take a think about what you would could put in that would also give you a permanent plus one to each of those stats outside of the mythos phase or outside of drawing a treachery card um but I wouldn't really care about that. What I would be thinking about is, oh, cool, I can play things like... Like, how this fits into non-seeker decks or decks that care about treachery cards or uh, being, needing extra willpower or evade in the mythos phase. Like, this might go well with... Um, what is his name? Uh, Finn. Because Finn Edwards wants items. He can get them out really quickly. Mm -hmm. And he also has super-duper low willpower. So this can help against the things you really want willpower against, yeah. which is the treachery cards. And you get a draw, which is even better for Finn. So, or maybe this goes into a deck where um, you want to play things like Delve Too Deep, and you want to like draw treachery cards to get more experience or get extra clues. So you can combat those treachery cards a little bit better. Um, and that's the whole build type, but that could be cool. Yeah. I think that's just stupid, don't you? No, I agree. I agree with you. No, I'm just kidding. That was All way right. more in-depth than my, like... I just thought of it, like, like right when we were talking about it. I thought that was really loud. I'm sorry. Right when we were talking about it, is like, because I was like, man, treachery alone sucks, but so let's think about the positives, and that's what made me think about it. But last thing is Unearth the Ancients, so it's insight type. Uh, I don't know why I, th I thought about that first. I think it's because I was getting at uh, spirit. Spirit has a care People care about spirit t subtypes now, and this insight works with the card from the last set, which was um, the card that lets you play an insight card from your discard pile, and then yeah. you remove them both from the game. Yeah. So that's why. Uh, one cost event, two books uh, on the side of this card when you commit it to a skill test. And it, you investigate. You choose an asset in your hand, uh, a seeker asset in your hand. The difficulty of the test is equal to the ch uh, chosen asset's printed cost. And if you succeed, instead of discovering clues, you get to put the uh, asset into play. And if it's a relic, then you get to draw a card to replace the one you just played, assumingly. Uh, for one resource, that is pretty cool. And if you're going to be investigating, that's... Uh, easy for seekers anyway yeah I, I i think this one um i agree with that this one is tribal but i don't think i think that it's cool just to be able to do that anyway because uh if you're really good at investigating but not really good at having money this oh, is a good way to play stuff <laughs> yeah yeah i agree and it, it it has two books to commit so mm -hmm. i mean it's pretty good if you're like doing the tribal thing it's really niche so well this i think that's what i'm saying is though is, that is i don't think it's super niche because you just get an, a little bit of an extra bonus when you play with relics but you get a, a lot of extra bonus if you just play it you like it makes it so if you're having money problems this is a good card to play if you have a relic deck this is a really good card to play right but i guess maybe you mean niche as in those two decks you'll only type it can be in yeah okay i'm just thinking of any card that makes you not have to pay money and play off of a test that you're good at is a good card. Like anywhere you're like replacing, like, um, like the one we talked about earlier, the Kevin Home Alone door <laughs> trap. Yeah. Thing. That's really good for seekers because they get a test of books, right? So investigate is usually a good test for seekers, and so maybe they can get around some of the other limitations they have with this card. So, um, but yeah, maybe Tyler's right. Maybe I'm overthinking it again. I didn't, I didn't say that. Don't but I, I know I did, oh, okay. so you didn't have to. You're right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're saying niche, right? Yeah. No, it, it has a, it has a cool effect, but I, I'm not so sure it would be like too super useful. And everything, yeah. I mean, most of the time we see it, our seekers have tons of money. Yeah. Or I guess our seeker has tons of money. Right. Because she's <laughs> she's like investigating a lot. She's not really like dropping too many cards. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Because she just gets her she gets her books way up high, and then investigates and we're like we're the ones like shooting monsters evading monsters yeah, and, and I'm thinking of seeker assets now and I think most of the time you'd use that to play an ally yeah so yeah maybe 
but yeah, that's it for the uh, secret cards. So um, if you if you like this format and you want us to do this for future deluxe expansions, let us know. If you don't like it, let us know what you do instead instead of just complaining because I'll make fun of you for it. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have any good ideas about what you want to do with Seekers in this set, let us know in the comments and like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Good luck on your adventures through the jungle. Yeah, see you next time.